just to talk a little bit about what you're seeing in the business. Obviously, the, the second quarter, you had greater than 100 uh, percent annual gains in, in revenues and, and, and premiums. Uh, very modest, I have to say, um, shortfall in revenue guidance relative to what the street was looking for on a small base. I mean, we're talking about a million dollars. Stock is down. What are you seeing in terms of the pacing of business in this quarter, which, of course, is almost half done? So, yeah, Q2 was a fabulous quarter. As you say, top line grew by over 100%. Actually, our gross profit grew by over 200%. And that was during the um, most dramatic quarter that we've had for so long because of the COVID-19 epidemic. So we did take a little bit of a conservative stance early in the quarter. And then as we saw that, actually, all of our KPIs, all, our, all of our key performance indicators, conversion and demand and uh, retention rates were all fabulous, we reversed course. As we look forward to Q3, we have a certain amount of uncertainty. The third quarter tends to be moving season. People, because of the school year, move a lot during the third quarter. And our caution was really rooted in that we don't know how much of the moving that traditionally happens in Q3 will happen this year. So we were a little bit conservative in terms of our profitability and our other guidance metrics. But so far, I have to say that the COVID pandemic has enabled us to continue to grow very aggressively to take market share and the trend towards digitization has really helped us. And, and moving season, of course, matters because renters, insurance and homeowners are, are, are the main uh, current lines of business. And uh, is there any concern within your, your guidance there about the mix of, of renters versus uh, new homeowners uh, at this point? Because uh, it might seem that there's at least anecdotally this move toward buying and not renting. So not really. We've actually reported a 17% increase in our premium per customer year on year. So not only are we having many more customers, they're each paying us a lot more. And we're seeing more and more of our renters become homeowners. About 10% of our uh, um, condo insurance customers started life with us as renters and then grew oftentimes 10 times more premium with no incremental spend. So all of the dynamics are good. All of the lights are green. We're just being a little bit cautious because we are in uncharted territory. So it's a little bit hard to predict. But at the same time that we've seen our top line and our bottom line grow, we've seen our risk, um, our ability to, to assess risk and price risk has improved dramatically. That is measured as loss ratio. And this quarter in Q2, we really became uh, um, at coming in at 67% loss ratio. We came in line with industry's best, having halved our loss ratio over two years. So even as we're growing very fast, we're getting better and better and better at pricing and underwriting risk, which is the very core of insurance. Daniel, Julia Borston here. A question about the business you launched about a month ago, which was the pet insurance business. With your ability to assess risk, why did it make sense to add that business now, especially when consumers, many consumers, are so strapped for cash? So pet insurance is something that is dramatically, even woefully underrepresented in the U.S. In other places, many European countries, 40, 50 percent of pet owners ensure the health of their pets. In the U.S., it hovers at around 1 percent. So we identified a massively underserved market. And indeed, the vast majority of our customers are pet parents. So there is a huge amount of demand, very little by way of supply. The incumbents have really not catered to this growing need. But more broadly, one of the unusual things about Lemonade is that the overwhelming majority, something like 90% of our customers are first-time buyers of insurance. The whole industry is predicated on the I switched and I saved marketing message, not so with Lemonade. So we're acquiring customers young. We're competing with non-consumption, which is a huge strategic boon. And then as those customers' insurance needs grow, we grow with them. So I spoke earlier about renters becoming homeowners. But pet owners is another part of that dynamic. And we'll be adding other insurance products to flesh out the offering and ensure that we cater to all of our customers' needs while growing lifetime value, while other metrics improve as well. Hi, Dan. It's, it's John Ford. I, I want to go back to the caution in your guidance. It, it seems to me like all of the fundamental metrics um, and all of the environmental metrics are pretty much should be moving in your direction. Online transactions are up. Uh, real estate market uh, continues to be active. I mean, if there's any time when people are cautious and probably want insurance, it would be now. H how much of this is because maybe the school year effect isn't 
in place the way it had been uh, in previous years, where, where people might want to move ahead of a school year so that their kids can be in a particular location. Maybe now with distance learning and the state of schools, that's not as much of an issue. Is it that kind of seasonality impact that's leading to your caution? What is it? It's exactly that. Um, and it's exclusively that, because as you say, all the other lights are green. So this is the time that people move because of the school year, either parents with their kids or adults for college. Um, and so far, we have reason to believe that we will continue to have a strong quarter. And indeed, our guidance for the quarter is very strong. The only question is whether it's going to be very strong or exceedingly strong. And that delta really depends on how much this third quarter financial quarter is going to be representative of prior financial quarters, where moving season really did drive up demand. And that was, as you say, driven by um, the school year. And given the COVID uh, pandemic, we're just taking a little bit of a cautionary note in our guidance due to that.